today and today we're going to have a game of Sly Spire Secret Agent on the Commodore Amiga. Now this was a game I used to have back in the day on the Commodore 64 and apart from the fucking long loading times because it was well I don't know if it was long loading but I know it was a multi loading the levels were pretty short it was a quite a good game better than all the James Bond games the official film ones that I have reviewed on all the systems so far the Commodore 64 version of Sly Stice its secret agent was pretty good the Amstrad version weren't too bad but the problem with that version it didn't have no sounds but the graphics looked pretty good but I think was it was playable I know it was playable so I have reviewed that version but I want to see how it plays on the Amiga because so far the Bond games, the official Bond games have been quite disappointed, they have been average at best by the looks of it this is a fucking Atari ST port once again it's made a screen, it doesn't use all the full screens something to do with the resolution of the ST I think, I don't know I don't know anything technical abilities about machines to be honest with you push if two to select music on or off winners don't use drugs right okay let's just play the game please enter your security clearance code by using the joystick now basically it's your call sign so everyone will put 007 but I always put 00 for some reason just to be different good morning agent 00 dearest well yeah that council for world domination yeah here we go so this is a two disc game so this is the first part All right. My first impression, I think this was better on the Commodore 64, it seemed to move better. It's just, once again, it looks average. But, I will say, I've not, I, right, as I said, there was a few different levels on on the Commodore 64 version, the versions I've loaded, there's different levels, but they were quite short. But it was a more enjoyable pl playing this than um, yeah, the James Bond games. And I feel I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be the same with this. So now it's, I mean, the loading times are nowhere as long as other versions but it doesn't look anything impressive now is it a notorious t-book now it seems to be using quite a, quite a lot of the screen unless they've just it feels like a notorious t-book it feels like it doesn't feel like oh uh, what's happened Oh, done it. Uh, oh, I don't think you got that on the Commodore 64 version. I think you did get the cutscenes, I can't remember. Oh, no one I'm, oh, this looks shit. Yeah, it doesn't look... Eh. It just feels lazy. I'm actually strangely enjoying this more than the James Bond games on the Amiga. So we've got lots of, you know, different levels going on here. I mean, it was on a parachute, turned into a shoot 'em up. Now we're on a motorcycle, so there's a lot of variation in the game. Just 
just a pity this wasn't an official James Bond game. Right, so you get credits, fire to continue. Oh, you continue? And you do con actually properly continue. Marvellous. So this is the end of level thing. Yeah, you got to shoot the guy in the car. Oh my god, he's got a fucking rocket launcher look. Now, I think they could have been taking scenes from James Bond films. Could this scene, like, because he's on a motorbike, could have been taken from Never Say Never Again? Because that motorbike looks like uh, in the Never Say Never Again. Well, I've got it. Obviously, he weren't shooting an armored car, but he was, he was chasing a car, wasn't he? Obviously. Please insert this B. Okay, it's not using two disk drives for some reason. We don't do that usually on the M, on the M, on the Mega 500. I don't know why. I doubt very much this would have worked on the 1200, so I didn't bother with that emulator settings. That usually supports multi-discs. So, what am I? Oh, game over. Oh, it continues. You know, even though it does look a bit average, I could see myself playing this game back in the day, though. If I had it. I did play. I think the problem with the Commodore 64 version, I didn't play it that much because it was so much loading. But this being on disc. I think I would have played it. I'll ignore that. See, where's the. Why can't I make a bit of an effort with the background? No, it's just. Yeah, it just looks so blue. It just. They could have added. Right, here we go. Yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. Right, last credit left. So it's got some good elements to this game. I like the fact that you get um, a variety of levels, like mini levels. They're, they're quite short, but you get a variety. So now we're fighting. Come on, get off this side of the screen so we can see what we're doing. So yeah, I've got to fire him. Fucking hell. Alright, done it. So you get a little bit of fighting going on, so that's good. Time goes swimming, don't forget to not harpoon. So now we've got a swimming level. Yeah, it looks quite good. We've got sharks. So, fundable. Or it could be um, Never Say Never Again. Well, that's all practically the same film. You know, strangely, I quite like I like this game. I do like it. Definitely better than the James Bond games. Better, much, I'll tell you, much better than the James Bond games, to be honest with you. Even though it's about oh, this guy. Yeah, I quite like that. I quite like that game. Um. I think more effort seemed to be made on the Commodore 64 version, but what? It was just a loading, just that it was just a multi-load. I know it's multi, but it's on disc, so it's faster loading times on the Amiga. But I, if I had this back in the day, I would have played it. I definitely would have played it. It's definitely playable. 
Um, it, it's a, I know it's, a, it's an Atari ST port. Well, I'm only presuming it is. But the gameplay of this game is pretty good. I quite like it. Graphics are quite nice. Um, I like the variation that you get levels. They are pretty short levels though. But that's fine. Because you get more variation. Yeah, I quite like it. Anyway, I'm going to end this now. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, and goodbye.